And now we're going to start with the last session of the day. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the moderator, Dr. Ahmed Al Hadi, who's a lecturer at Sultan Qaboos University. Please come over. And uh, I would like to introduce the speakers. Uh, Mr. Faisal Al Ladath, who is the Chief Transformation Officer at the National Bank of Oman. Uh, Dr. Khaled Tahan, the Chief Executive Officer, Blockchain Solutions and Services. Uh, Dr. Tariq Taha, who is the AGM and Chief Information Officer at Bank Dufar. And Mr. Ahmed Laujaili, who is the Senior Assistant General Manager at Business Solutions and Apps at the Bank of Muscat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, inshallah, in this discussion today, in the panel, we got myself, Ahmed Lahati, going to panel this uh, specialist and expertise in fintech and fi 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 blockchain and finance and banking sectors. And uh, first of all, uh, we have two presentations uh, in related field. Uh, Dr. Khat Tahan will present first, and Dr. Faisal will follow by then. Uh, we're going to discuss mainly three important uh, questions in fintech in Oman and financial se sectors, mainly uh, where we are and are we ready to collaborate and the future of fintech. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Dr. Khal, please start. Assalamu alaikum. So um, I'm just going to present an example of the government's initiative. Uh, the Blockchain Solutions and Services Company is such a government initiative, uh, which we are framing the way forward for such initiatives to be, to be taken forward. From a governance perspective, how do we get the entrepreneurs, innovators to come forward and create the channels for them to ease that process? So we'll start with a presentation just going through what we are doing. So a brief introduction on blockchain itself. With the internet, uh, when the internet came, it enabled the exchange of information from peer to peer very easily. And that potentially could have disrupted the media industry where it was the platform for exchange of information. However, the media industry matured and adopted the technology and utilized it to its benefits. With blockchain, you've got the enablement of exchange of anything of value, be it money, be it your medical records, be it a land ownership certificate. And that can potentially disrupt the financial or any middleman position, any exchange of information between party to party, not information, value from peer to peer or it could be used as an asset to optimize and improve your, the efficiency of such services. And that's what we're trying to focus on. We're trying to utilize its benefits to improve our services and innovate new use cases for it because it's very immature and new use cases are being defined every day. So I'm going to highlight limitations of the technology and risks. So you've got early adoption risk, quantum computing, lack of standardization, regulatory hurdles, alternative distributed ledger technologies, privacy, confidentiality, scalability and performance issues, and interchange settlement issues. We could look at these as risks. However, with every risk comes an opportunity. And that's where we should be focusing. The early adoption risk, we can potentially innovate and lead these new use cases and business models. With quantum computing, we can contribute to quantum resilience research. With lack of standardization, we can devise technologies that define and structure such standards. Regulatory hurdles, defining regulations, we can be the definition of regulations for others to follow. Alternative distributed ledger technologies, we can create the next big thing in distributed ledger technology. So that's what I'm trying to highlight. We need to focus on the opportunities. And when we focus on the opportunities, we will innovate and we will lead. What we look at as the company that's been established, we aim to innovate new unrecognized use cases and business models. We will self-develop these solutions in Oman to improve our own services and in the same time utilize them to improve efficiency and security within our services. Furthermore, once these have been proven and tested in Oman, we can commercialize them locally and globally as Omani products and solutions. 
So what is the National Initiative and our role as a company? So we are in the process of establishing the needed infrastructure for blockchain integration within the system. The Blockchain Club has been set up to focus on knowledge transfer. We want to make sure developer society are competent in smart contract development, which there is a deficiency of worldwide. So adding that asset to the development society in Oman is a key goal. Uh, the Research Council and ITA are working on uh, awareness and research into the technology, such as consensus algorithm and scaling solutions. Us as a company are working with SMEs to identify and innovate new use cases with viable business models to develop and take to market. Furthermore, everything we're doing on that scale is being reviewed by regulators, such as CBO, ITA, and TRA. And that is for them to make proper regulations with time as they see and experiment with the technology. So the idea is regulations will come. It's just we need to make, it, make those regulations come out of proper experience. Our focus is predominantly on, on your side would be the left side of that, of that graph, which is the proof of concept. We want to work on that area. We're not looking at adoption today. That is not our goal. We are looking at innovating, taking it to market, testing the new use cases, proving it, and then we reach to adoption and actually potentially leading that adoption of such a new use case. So in summary, blockchain and distributed ledger technology offers us today the opportunity to innovate, own, and lead many use cases based on the technology rather than merely adopt third-party solutions. As a national initiative, a structure has been put in place to enable such local innovation to flourish. We are available to help facilitate matters for innovations, uh, innovators as well as guide industry to use cases the national initiative is intended in bringing to market to ensure collaborative efforts and results are achieved. Thank you. I just want to uh, give an overview on what FinTech uh, is and its state uh, as we stand today. I won't take too much time because I know the main highlight uh, is the panel discussion itself. Needless to say, we've heard within this conference itself, technology is disrupting everything. As you can see, it's disrupting business models and business model in turn is disrupting uh, the industries. What you see here, the largest taxi company does not own a single taxi. The largest accommodation company does not own a single uh, living asset. Skype, which is the largest telecom company, does not have the telecommunication infrastructure. And one of the largest retailer does not have anything in its own inventory. And you know the story. The top 50, top five, let's say the 50 percent of the top 500 companies will not exist in 10 years time. That's the amount of disruption the industries without I can't remember an industry which has not been impacted. What about banks? Luckily, I think we've been one of those last bastion of industry which remains to be disrupted. But that is all changing. Can I have with the show of hands, perhaps of how many people really look forward to going to a branch and doing bank banking transaction? I thought so. So what is happening is, if you look, the lay of the land when, when it comes to our services, some of them, as you can see on the, on the uh, screen here, since 2008, for the, uh, let's say for the last 10 years, the banks have been quite uh, um, busy with compliance related uh, issues, uh, regulatory related issues because of the great recession that we had. During this period, the customers have become used to having a very good, uh, easy way of doing business in other facets of life. And banks were still monolithic. So fintech companies, which is a short for financial technology companies, filled in the gap against each of these categories. So against each of these categories, you can say, be it 
lending, payments, remittance, investment, money market, and so on, there are point companies, financial technology and a ho host of them actually, who do a far superior job than we have been doing in banks. And through the process, they've been gnawing away our market share. Now, what about the region? This trend is also starting to emerge in the region. We've got, based on uh, 2016 WAMDA report, there are about 105 fintech companies which are born from the region. Although bulk of it is in uh, UAE, Egypt, and Jordan. But you can see that that is happening here. And, and just to give you some data points, the, uh, uh, um, they're getting investments around, for example, Paytabs recently got investment of 20 million. Um, um, there's uh, investment, for Beehive, there was investment of 15 million, and so on and so forth. So depending on no matter which, which area, be it payments, lending, peer-to-peer -peer lending, or any other facets of, uh, uh, the banking, we are getting competition from local. So what does that mean? Does that mean, and what is the impact of this? Referring back to a McKinsey report, uh, which came in uh, uh, late, late part of 2016, if banks do not react, do not adequately respond to this fintech, if everything goes well, we will have, we'll see a dilution of these percentages that you see there, I know they are quite high these percentage on our revenue. For example, across five uh, uh, consumer products uh, uh, that we have, consumer finance, for example, will have an impact of 40% of our revenue by 2026. This is a report came in, if we do not do anything. So clearly, we have to wake up to the fact that this is real, whether we like it or not, this is coming. Now, the question then becomes, is, is FinTech a friend or to be seen as a foe? Clearly, fintech has the advantage that they are quite innovative, they're quite nimble, they are very good in data science, they understand the subcultures of the portfolio, uh, of the customers that participate. But equally, they need us as banks because, uh, for example, banks have a great amount of trust with their customer base, which they need access to uh, the banking system, which can only be done through banks. And similarly, uh, they, they, if they want to avoid regulatory pressures, they have to partner with the bank. So that's a good symbiotic relationship which is there. The, there are six models, perhaps more, but six models in which the bank and fintechs can work together. I mean, one is bank can itself start, give birth to a fintech digital pure bank, which Neo uh, and um, uh, CBD Live and so on have done uh, within the region. The other thing is, we offer fintech services through the bank. So you have, you know, KYC uh, kind of services, um, remittance services, and so on and so forth. This is where you partner. The other one is to incubate. Barclays Bank, for example, has got an incubation center. So does other other banks where they incubate and uh, uh, providing facilities. Uh, um, for uh, startups and then you can observe and see which one succeeds or not. This is another option. You can invest uh, in equity, you can totally acquire them or you can again uh, have a strategic partnership. So there are different, different models which are there. It, to have a sustainable ecosystem, you need to have all the four pillars. You need to have policy regulations, source to talents. The skill set that is required is very different. You need that. You need to have a market which is expanding, which will make sense for them to scale. And then, uh, uh, last but not the least, is uh, the access to capital through angel investors uh, uh, or VCs. Now, with an NBO, uh, we recognize that, see, in, in order to live in this new world that we're moving into, you need to inculcate a culture of innovation. This is very critical. So, four, four years back, we recognized the importance of this thing and we established some platform. I'd like to share with you a small video uh, around the journey that we have taken.
financial services landscape is changing, and we asked ourselves, how can we run and change the bank at the same time? In short, what we needed is innovation. We need to give people the space they need to succeed. To inculcate a digital mindset and spur innovation, NBO established a platform called Diptikar in 2014 and has run over 60 experiments to date. During these experiments, employees work to create prototype mobile apps to address real customer problems. But how does it work? Let me show you. First, we concentrate on areas where we need to excel. Open-ended questions yield open-ended answers. Make your challenge statement a question focused on a specific problem to be solved. Every year, the management meets, reviews, and sets two to three critical priorities that will set the direction of the bank. These are the areas where we want to be the region's number one. Second, we established a formal innovation competition platform inside the organization, where you invite ideas from all across the bank in every division to help solve key business problems. Lay out the step-by-step -step process for how to participate so your employees aren't overwhelmed. Third, provide company resources and internal mentors to the shortlisted candidates. The main goal is to get a rough idea into a working prototype. This requires skill sets from a range of stakeholders. For each of our shortlisted ideas, we partner each innovator with a team of specialists from strategy, IT, creative design, and finance to develop a robust prototype that can work in the real world. Four, make some noise. Organize a company-wide event where the ideas can be showcased and judged. Provide a platform where employees can pitch their ideas like a startup with the winning ideas securing funding for development and launch into the market. No matter what happens with the winning idea, well-managed internal competitions teach employees new skills, connects them across multiple departments, and amplifies the company's overall creative ambience. But you know what has been the greatest awakening? It is learning that innovation exists everywhere and inside each and every one of us. We just need to dig deep to find it. We have NBO to thank for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Faisal. Uh, in fact, uh, the presentation, <laughs> uh, we will talk a lot from your slides, actually. And I think I'm going to start firstly from um, Mr. Ahmed Najeli, Bank Muscat, uh, uh, you know, statistics in fintech in MENA region and in GCC and in Oman, many surveys through the Ernst Young and uh, KTR and WOMDA and so on, shows actually uh, that the banks in Middle East are least familiar with the fintech. Uh, this familiar in terms of this adoptions, this innovative, and creative. Seven percent only of the bank they believe they are familiars. I mean, CEOs of the banks, they are familiar with the fintech. And I just want to share your views. Where do you see yourself? Do you think are we disrupted by by the fintech? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Banks would not. I, I think banks in this day and age need technology and have been using technology for quite a long time. And no bank can exist today without uh, financial technology. Traditionally, the banks have approached different companies for looking for the solutions that are needed for this uh, kind of technology requirements that they have, acquired these kind of technologies and moved on to develop it and enhance it with different technology partners. Today, the wave is moving towards uh, fintechs. Exactly. And uh, as Dr. Khalid mentioned earlier, awareness needs to grow uh, within the organizations like the banks, the country altogether so that we become more familiar with these concepts and what's happening around the world so that we can also adopt similar kind of, uh, similar kind of initiatives and technologies. Things like uh, pilots and proof of concepts are things that help 
to ensure that kind of awareness is coming. And I'm sure maybe my colleagues will also talk about how they are doing it in their uh, respective banks. In Bank Muscat, for example, we have created an innovation group headed by senior management that are looking at the current technologies that are becoming more popular, like blockchain, and how we can utilize these technologies within the banking industry to better the services, to improve the reach of the customers, to improve the speed of the transactions, for example, to improve even the cost of these transactions. And these kind of groups that have been created within the banks are looking at different streams of these technologies. One of them is the blockchain. And from within that, there is several things. Payments is one side, smart contracts is another, um, you know, different transfers, uh, solutions that are based on the blockchain are all being looked at, explored, and eventually, you know, adopted when it makes sense for the bank from a customer point of view, from a regulations point of view, and so on. Do you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, I, I actually don't think there is a shortage. Every bank in and by itself has some form of uh, innovation sector. And it's, it's very clear. Every bank in Oman does have an innovation sector. The only thing that I might be saying is missing is it's segregated. It's segregated efforts which may potentially not give you the most optimal results. And that's something we have actually also been defining and potentially may, maybe taking forward collaboratively. To make that effort more collaborative, it may be more effective. Yeah, but uh, when we talk about the innovation, we talk about innovation in fintech, and the fintech defined as a financial technology that the bank not yet adopt. It's, you know, you know but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you have a collaborative, for example, every one of the bank's hackathon, it could be a collaborative hackathon, yeah. and then each bank can potentially seek the in implementations that they see most promising and go forward with it. Bank the far, I think, Dicto uh, already initiated the hack zone, if you remember. And what's, what's your experience from hack zone? Because we come up to the innovation, uh, Dicto Khalil said. Assalamu alaikum. Obviously, we have initiated what we called a competition, which was called TechMind. Uh, it wasn't really a hackathon, but it was, uh, the idea was to ask the uh, people in the community to come up with their ideas on how would, li they, would they like to see our services being offered. I would like to see the banks being part of their daily routine. And uh, there have been a number of bright ideas that came out from the exercise that we have done. We're working on implementing some of these internally in the bank, but the others need to be implemented within the ecosystem as a whole and not within Bank Bufar or with one of the single banks by itself. It's not, it's not going to work. It has to be done yep. in the ecosystem. Exactly. And uh, therefore, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to collab collaborate as banks. We're trying to look at ways by which we can help SMEs in the market. We can help youngsters. Uh, in a way by which they can take up these ideas and start working into implementing them and we will support them being on board and doing the same and utilizing these services once they are available for us to be utilized. Yep. Thank you for this actually. Uh, Dr. Faisal, I think we'll come back to, to the ecosystem because Dr. Tar already announced it. Uh, we see from your slide the ecosystem, I think that's from the Middle East or Arab, Arab board. What, what do you think? Uh, from Oman perspective, the, the, frame, the, the framework plus, you know, the ecosystem, and I think Dr. Khalid will add to this too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so on the ecosystem, uh, uh, this is a journey. So, you know, um, it's something... Um, that's, why I, that's why I ask framework too, because the ecosystem, right. the existed one, the framework, what we're going to do. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, the ecosystem, the way um, um, was put in the presentation, is, has got four pillars. One is the, uh, the regulatory pillar, which creates an environment for uh, a fintech, which is a very nascent um, start, and the failure rates are very high, so you need to nurture them and protect them. So what kind of framework uh, that can put in place which will uh, help good ideas to mature and thrive. 
for example, I, I think outside you were speaking about sandbox. Yep. So that's one example of accelerating of where, the regulation. Yeah, so regulator also learns as well as it provides a nurturing environment to understand, particularly in the early stages, what will work, what will not work, how should we shape it, yep. those kind of a thing. The other one is the, um, the talent itself. Now, Oman is blessed with um, a lot of youngsters coming out from uh, universities. So now, the question is, how can we really uh, prepare them around competencies which are required for this forward-looking yep. times? Exactly. So, for example, SQU would have uh, um, programs on fintech, yep. uh, more collaboration between uh, you know banking industry and the um, school. This is this is another thing. The third thing is access to market. It would be really good. I know this will take time. For example, in Europe, if you start up a company in Paris, you have a passport into other countries. Yep. For GCC, perhaps we should look at ways in which where you know uh, you can have access to a much bigger market. And then the last pillar is around access to capital, capital. right? So you need to have a healthy um, uh, support <coughs> in providing angel, angel investors or VCs uh, of that do, nature. Do bank ready to go to invest in, do you think? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll back to Dr. Khad later. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to touch base on, so what we are as BSS is one such experiment from the government. And I'm going to touch base on all four of the pillars. Uh, I'm going to start in reverse. Investment, there is no shortage of investment in Oman. There is a lot of parties ready to invest into great ideas, be it banking or non-banking sectors. And there are government entities for that as well, and private entities. Uh, the market, I agree. Our market penetrance is not great. However, we still have the GCC as a market. That is an ecosystem in and by itself that we can penetrate. Um, what was the second one? Talent. Talent. Uh, with regards to talent, something with regards to changing a full schooling knowledge for prepare, to prepare people for new innovative technology is not really going to work. Technology moves too fast for that. Changing a full academic protocol does not work. You effectively need to have add-on patches of knowledge, just like the, research, the club, the blockchain club, is adding to our developer society smart contract programming. So these are patchwork education, which make you, so I'll give you a very, a very good example. There's 9,000 smart contract developers worldwide, but there's 9 million general developers worldwide. If we have 50 Omanis capable of developing smart contract, that's an asset not just to Oman, but to the world. And then we go back to regulation. So what we're doing, and this is a real life example, which is what we're doing with regards to blockchain, everything we are doing is with full transparency to the regulators. And that structure is being defined. I'm not saying it's there, it's being defined. However, we are providing full transparency to the regulators so that they can make educated and experiential based changes to regulations should they be required. So we are devising that last channel that we're just describing. But every one of those pillars has, are, is being worked on. Yep. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Ahmed, and I think Dr. Tarek too can share this idea. You know, uh, recently, recent surveys also showed that one of three clients are happy to move out from their current banks. And 8% of the SMEs loans coming in next uh, uh, five years reach maybe 20 billions in fintech and easy, less cost, faster, emerging. This all strength of the fintechs. Do you think banks are aware of these strengths of the fintech? I think yes, from uh, the studies that we are also looking at from the perspective of how these fintechs are disrupting, to some extent, certain established uh, financial industry kind of norms. Um, the awareness is there that, yes, there are many examples that have even been mentioned in the different uh, presentations. Um, awareness is there. Awareness that these financial technologies around us in the region or maybe worldwide 
are springing up and they are taking part of the business where there is maybe certain gaps um, from a micropayments point of view, from microfinancing point of view, from the speed of the transfers and so on. And the banks are aware of this and they are looking at what kind of technologies that are out there, what are the different collaborations that you, can be you, made. You already create a group. Yes. I think the bank must get to create these initiatives. Right? Yes. And I think you announced it in SQ, if you remember. How it works? It coming, uh, I mean, is it establishing something? They start, uh, I mean, it's internal information. Uh, you know, I think the visitors here and sitters happy to know if, if, uh, if not yes. privacy. Yes. <laughs> the group is actually looking at, um, looking at the, um, one of the streams that we are looking at within this group is actually the blockchain. Blockchain. Yes. How can we, we are actually looking at local needs in terms of certain types of contracts that are currently uh, perhaps not efficiently or can be made more efficiently available through the blockchain. We are also looking at how trade finance can be done through the blockchain. Uh, some of the things that we have also been exploring is how can we, for example, look at Ripple as one of the technologies that are yep. getting established for the payments and yep. the transfers. And uh, these are the kind of things that we are currently looking at as, a, as this innovation group. Uh, nice to hear this earnestly, because I think it was very short. And uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Tarek, recently one of the three firms ready to grow in fintech, 20 international fintech firms coming in the region, 100 50 billion dollars expected investment in fintech in the next five years. Are we aware of this as a bank? Okay, uh, first of all, I'll pick up from where uh, my colleague has ended and your question before that, which is uh, you mentioned that one out of every three customers is not satisfied with the services that we offer in the banking industry. And, and to me, this tells us that the demand is increasing, the yep. needs are changing, exactly. and therefore uh, we need to target that or try to achieve better services in two different aspects. One, by continuing to improve our services and cater for the demand through the technologies that are available today, and in this case we become adopters of technology. And then the other aspect that we were discussing earlier, which is we build our own technologies. We come up with new fintechs in Oman, and then maybe not only use them within the country, but export them externally. So us as banks, we cannot leave one of these two. So we need to continue to work on the first aspect. We need to continue to improve our services. We need to continue to be adopters. But guess what? If the technologies or the initiatives or the fintechs that are coming up within Oman are able to provide us with the uh, technologies that we're looking for, then this becomes much better and much easier for us to adopt them as opposed to adopting technologies or uh, uh, softwares or packages coming from elsewhere in the world. We will, by the way. <laughs> I think Dr. Khalid has... Uh, uh, no, I just wanted to say I, I agree fully, uh, but we will. Uh, that's the agenda. And uh, the reason we're not looking at tradition... So why are we looking at blockchain today? Um, because the opportunity to lead is there. Um, if you want to purely adopt blockchain, think of it in five years when everything has been standardized. But, Dr. Khaled, yani, Dr. but I, understand, I understand his point of view. I do understand Dr. his point Dr. Khaled says, in, in other terms, it's very efficient to adopt than to host in-house building. Adoption is always an easier path. I will not deny that. There has to be a will and a way to change. Yep. Adoption is a standard. We want to change that. Yep. So, uh, Dr. Faisal, uh, also, uh, the interesting statistic shows also, because I, I usually, I believe, because as an accountant, I believe in numbers. And I totally uh, have, I give credit to the numbers. Uh, this, 
The statistics so, says 88% of the fintech, they still believe they are partners, not the competitors. On the other side, you can see, you know, banks usually uh, uh, serving four main conditions or four position in the market. One of them, uh, incomplete information, bank can solve this through securitization, collateralization, through risk management system, denomination of deposits and give it to the, you know, uh, lenders. But on the other side, peer to peer solve this, you know, they take this position even faster. You know, they manage to create machine learning, big data analysis, faster, liquid, and, um, and also at the same time, uh, they create from their exposures a software, they can even sell it to the banks. So, do you think statistics says that majority they still want to work with the banks and they still believe themselves as a partners? From your viewpoint, because reading from your slides, you can see fintech startups growing. Is growing. For example, in, in UAE, it's 45. In Jordan, 15. In Egypt, 15. In, 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 in Kuwait, 8. In Oman, 1. It just started because, you know, CBOs, regulations, so on. So, as a, what do you think from this view? <clears throat> so, um, I, like I mentioned, it's a symbiotic uh, relationship. It, it is not to be seen as being an adversarial thing. Both need. Because the r rate of change is so great, you cannot do it everything inside. Yep. So that's recognizing. That's recognizing. So a model that banks can come where um, you can collaborate uh, with, uh, uh, with fintech companies around areas where they want to differentiate uh, um, just makes sense. Now, Thawani already collaborate with Monarch. Bank Larab, yep. yeah, yeah. so this is a part of the collaborations. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which stage and where? So that's the thing, so the range of options, perhaps if you were to look into uh, some of the markets. The BBVA is a bank which um, uh, actively acquires and buys off fintech company very early on. So they, if you ask what kind of business are they in, they are not necessarily in a traditional banking business. Yep. They are actually a software house which does banking. Yep. It's, it's sort of a we thing. Still, we so, still need banks. Yep. So those range of options at present does not exist in the region because we are not allowed to invest more than 5% hmm. as an example. But that said, there are other models we can start working with. For example, you can have a revenue share model. Again, you know, it's a baby step moving on to the uh, other extreme, uh, which is that. So this is the part around where uh, proactively one of the pillars we have to look at and see what are the incentives for various parties yep. to, uh, you know, benefit from so that this marriage happens. Perfect. You know, uh, I think because previously we talked about uh, the collaboration between the banks. Now we talk collaboration between <coughs> the banks and fintech. Dr. Khaled, I think. Sure. Prior to that, um, I'm actually going to look at it from a different point of view, maybe the other end or of the scale. Possibly the banking sector needs to look at this as an in opportunity to invest, to look into new innovations, to adapt and remain survivable. This is seriously similar to when BlackBerry ignored Apple and their touch screen and thought the keyboard was the best and they, and they died out. So it's a matter of survival. You need to adapt with the new times and the new technologies as long as I'm with Bank Far, As long as they continue providing me the same service I can achieve, I don't need to use something that's more efficient, I will remain there. You won't move. And in the end of the day, it's By the way, four from 10 independent they say we are less dependent on the bank now. And this happened in India, and this happened in Egypt, in Morocco. And uh, it's really what you say is, uh, uh, it, it should be considered by the bank. What do you think, Ustad? No, I think, I think we have even been discussing this uh, earlier. Better cooperation is required. 
And, and we have good news if yes. you want to do the honors. Uh, I guess I think I'll leave it to, to Dr. Tarek maybe to give the information that we've been discussing earlier regarding how we can build a platform to, to collaborate. I think, yep, I think Dr. Tarek can uh, yeah, what, what, initiate this. Yeah, what we have agreed earlier is that there will be a collaboration between the technology committee uh, in the Oman Bankers, so Bankers Association representing the uh, banks in Oman along with BSS towards trying to set uh, a platform by which we can support uh, the incubation of ideas, maybe creating an incubator and so on, by which we will uh, we'll bring these ideas and then hopefully uh, utilize them uh, in regards to the banking community. Now maybe with the focus initially will be on blockchain, but obviously that with will others, expand yeah. as we go forward. So the framework is not there yet, however the agreement is... is We're defining the framework. Good. So this is one of the seed of the organizers today, and of the firm as I will. Anyway, Dr. Mr. Faisal, uh, again, uh, if we talk about the fintech and the examples we have now, uh, uh, you know, many fintechs, uh, it says one of the four it's failed in the early stage because they, didn't, they don't have the capital supporting and the regulations, they stop them and so on. And in the framework, we were, I think in our last hour meeting, we talked about the sandbox. Uh, and sandbox can be possible uh, or temporary uh, solution uh, to mitigate this you know, regulation uh, problem. From Ex your experience in Oman, I think, is eight years, something like? It's about six years, yeah. Six years. Uh, there are different models of sandbox, and Dr. Khaled will share us with this. No, I won't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, everyone is uh, trying to avoid the regulation issues, and which is a bank. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> so what the best model do you think uh, uh, in Oman? to adopt sandbox, I mean, as an idea, not <coughs> because it's a, at the end. For example, in, in, in Singapore, Mass, the monetary fund, they hold the sandbox, and they managed to success, you know, three or four projects, and this also happened in Jordan, and happened, in, you know, in UAE. What the, the best practice do you think we can adopt as a sandbox if you have an idea? Yeah. Do you want to take this? Yeah. So, um, I'm not an expert in sandboxes, but what I've seen in UAE, for example, they've got two sandboxes, one in DIFC and one is uh, ADGM, I think. Um, now, what it does is it, uh, it gives, first of all, access to customers like other banks, yep. this is one thing, where the... Through the API and so on. Yep. Uh, not only that, but access... To the real data. To, uh, uh, and, and the ambit of uh, uh, yep. DIFC. Uh, it also gives um, um, some time frames at which certain regulations will not be applied. So a relaxation to see. For example, um, uh, if, if you want to have a blockchain-based um, um, some processing, in the, regular, the, the laws may not allow it to do it mainstream, but within that confinement of, of that, uh, that environment, that is allowed. Uh, tolerance for failure is there. Now this is two-way street. Regulators are also looking at it. So now what happens is regulator is proactively also supporting and finding out what will work, what won't work, uh, uh, kind of a thing. And similarly, uh, uh, banks are also learning how to work with this. And similarly, the fintech companies are also uh, uh, getting to know the compliance requirements and so on, uh, which is there. Uh, Dr. Tarak, do you have anything on this? Uh, no, I, ju I just agree, agree with uh, what Mr. Faisal has said. Uh, I'll just uh, go back to the first point that you mentioned, which is there is a high failure rate. And that's expected. You know, these, uh, these are new things. These are new technologies, new ideas. So we do expect that not all of them will succeed and will make it. There will be a lot of failures, but the point is, from a number of these ideas, if we come up with something that really makes sense and could be utilized, then this is a win situation for us. Yep. Yep. Uh, also, statistics so says you know, uh, 
one of the main concern of the clients and customer is security. And as you know, the banks also works in behalf of the customer for this through also in behalf of the government and regulation through the many Landring Act, Tourist Act, and so on. And um, um, Mr. Ahmed Lajeli also, I think, and Dr. Khalid later as well, uh, the security concern. If we, because of course, if I, as I am a customer, if, if the FinTech started by Bank Muscat and you know SMEs, I will go to Bank Muscat because it it give me advantage of the security, my credit card, my e payments and so on. Recently says most more threatened security in I think uh, dimension of fintech is the payment, the wallets. And do you have any ideas? Uh, I think, Dr. Khad, uh, I will transfer this to you. Uh, the, f the security purpose. And imagine 75% of the clients, they are just afraid of the security and they are not trusting FinTech as well. Okay, so basically, um, so looking at it from a perspective of blockchain. Blockchain looks at things from a distributed manner and uh, where effectively the management of your keys which handle your wallets is delegated to the to the party themselves as in I own I own my own wallet he owns his own wallet rather than for example a bank which could be a honeypot so generally speaking any so it's the reverse of what you described uh, when you have a bigger pool of users in one place, it becomes a bigger reward to a hacker to attack it. Because it's one attack, big reward. But if it's distributed, it's actually harder to uh, attack the, those vectors one by one because each one is just gonna be a small reward. Um, so that is one benefit in which blockchain presents. Uh, even within the banking sector, it can be distributed. So each, each party from, bank, if say, let's say Bank Muscat adopts uh, a blockchain-based wallet service, they can each have their own uh, private key within their own wallet. They're in control of it. However, you are their recovery mechanism only, should they lose that wallet. But they're custodial. So it's all about custody and non-custody uh, wallets. Uh, and that's why also exchanges online, even in the uh, cryptocurrency world, they are the target of attack because they hold everyone's private keys. So anywhere there is a collection of people's identities is a the, the, target. The, the more concentrated, exactly. uh, the, the more threatened. I think uh, just to add, you know, technologies go through a cycle of uh, awareness and maturity. Yep. And if you look at the previous technologies that were used, like internet banking or even mobile banking and so on, the adoption initially had the same kind of issues, you yep. know, would people trust the security of it, can I do it through this kind of online, through the internet channels and, and so on. Yes. But eventually once it has become well established that these are secure means of doing these kind of financial transactions, then the adoption boomed and everyone started using it and uh, basically it's well trusted technologies now. And I think that's the same kind of trend probably where eventually once the understanding of this blockchain and uh, related kind of services that are there and the awareness of that grows, then I think it's going to yep. catch on. And I, I wouldn't, uh, I'll be very honest with you, I know we, we don't, shouldn't be touching base on cryptocurrencies, but it isn't actually something to be worried about. Because in the end of the day, it's actually an asset towards the bank. What's the bank's assets? They pertain the security of your funds. Is it just security in fintech? So it's uh, not an uh, end question, actually. Uh, I'll move to um, Dr. Tarek as well, then Dr. Faisal, about what do you think the bank strategy toward the fintech? Uh, you know, uh, recently again says uh, uh, the, the strategies uh, diversified and uh, also Onvis recently says, you know, one of the secured and diversification 
uh, strategy uh, is to go to fintech. So from your viewpoint, uh, what do you think uh, the strategy uh, toward the fintech? Okay. Obviously, there are two approaches that we can take. One is to uh, be defensive and say, no, that's not going to that's, that's not going to affect us and not support the idea. But as uh, Dr. Khalid said at the beginning, it's, uh, it's a matter of survival and it's a matter of them catching up. So I believe that there is no option to go for that approach. So the other approach that we're looking at is we do believe that there are some services where fintechs will excel in. And us as banks looking at our size and uh, procedures and processes to try and roll out some of these services that might take longer and therefore they will be in a much better shape than us to provide these services to the end customer. So the question is how can we support them into providing these services and how can we look at these as opportunities because with these yep. services coming in there are other opportunities yep. that you can actually achieve from a banking point of view and therefore we are more than happy to support fintechs coming up. We are more than happy to be part of that and uh, we're more, more, more than happy to actually look at the opportunities that it brings towards us by which we can do things differently. Yep. Uh, in, in short, this is, this, is, this, is, this is our position today as Bank of Far, and I'm sure the other banks will be in the same position. Uh, Dr. Faisal, uh, again, uh, payment system in FinTech is really very mature in the region. We just started in Oman peer-to-peer -peer as well, peer lending. And uh, which area that the bank in Oman do you think can penetrate in fintech? Because you know, uh, now 88% of the fintech in the Middle East is payment, wallets, and transfer. So that's generally the trend which goes you yep. first, uh, the first wave is about the first, uh, yeah, exactly, uh, the first trend. And, and, and lending. So the opportunity, I think, is see, um, one area uh, which fintechs are very good at is targeting the non-banked. Uh, you can look at markets, and you also have quoted some examples where they have really ramped up. Uh, if you look at Oman, uh, I think uh, among nationals, about 65% is banked. But when it comes to expats, it's less than 50% or yep. I mean, uh, or banked. Other 50% have not banked. So from a bank standpoint, if we partner with a fintech, why can't we capture that market also without sweating it? Yep. So this is an, as an example. The other thing is also peer-to-peer -peer lending, right? Um, as we know, the SMEs are very uh, credit stopped. And banks sometimes don't have appetite to yep. lend uh, in this particular time. But with peer-to-peer -peer lending model, if you introduce it in, in, in a place like Oman, where individual investors are taking risk, we are providing the yep. platform, why don't we capture that part of the market also without uh, yep. risking our, our uh, I shocked capital, even right? in a lot of emerging market where we've been to Singapore, Hong Kong, and Thailand, Malaysia. Uh, it's about almost 100 days there's a platform for the peer-to-peer -peer. in US. In every five, five days they have initiate one platform for peer-to-peer -peer and it's diversified. Right. It's so very diversified. If you look at the local, local, see these are very uh, early stages. If you look at Beehive, which is yep. uh, based out of uh, UAE, uh, the last I checked, they have given out close to 200 million uh, AED in a matter of four, four years. Yep. Less than four years actually. 2014 is when they got incorporated. They've got 7,000 active customers. So that's a market which is coming out. Rather than be it outside the banking, why? Because what ba as banks we're very good at is you speak about security, right? Yep. Uh, we've put an infrastructure which has taken time, and it's one of the most secure among other industries. So hosting and uh, sponsoring such kind of platform, collaborating with uh, fintech, is good for the market. Yep. Uh, you know, recent statistics from Main Power also say that you know, uh, about two million uh, something expatriates in Oman and majority of them as a labor, uh, you know, blue uh, colors labor. And mostly, mostly they don't have bank account and they do a daily transfer. So what about the remittance too? 
Yep, the one is, the one is already accommodating them. Yep, yep. Uh, I think uh, one of the last question here, uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, FinTech funding, uh, the recently available funding through RIADA, and we have, you know, a different uh, platform on this, but, but they have debts and equities. And uh, I'll come to the question, Dr. Khalid. What about our accelerators and incubations as well for the FinTech? So, um, as we said, we are solving this uh, jigsaw puzzle as we go along. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. So the announcement today that has been made is to unify. So there are two conclusions we can say. One, it was segregated efforts. So we're now trying to collaborate them. Very and that's nice. the announcement today. Yes. Secondly, the channel with the, with the regulators, when it's collaborated, when it's collaborated we, become, we end up having one channel, for example, with blockchain, towards the regulators, with data being provided to them for knowledge transfer to them so that they can define uh, regulations with time. So this collaborative effort is the healthier approach. Um, so that is being defined today. Secondly, we can explore our avenues where we may potentially be lacking. We do not, as we mentioned, we don't have enough, we have more than enough in investments, firms and private and public willing to invest. Uh, there are incubators with regards to a startup development uh, from an operations perspective, potentially physical incubators could potentially be an option in collaboration with Riyadh, et etc., and such parties. So the bottom, the key word in all of this is collaboration. Yep. Uh, I just remind you, Jasper is a Canadian software that uh, collaborate the Central Bank of Canada and three best largest banks in Canada and three startup peer-to-peer -peer lending in one platform. So see, the, you know, this is a good example, Jasper, uh, for our future as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ahmed Lajedi, uh, Dr. Tariq, Dr. Fazal, and uh, Dr. Khalid uh, for these discussions. And I think uh, the, the good, uh, uh, the good output from this discussion today, uh, we initiate the collaboration uh, between the banks, uh, associations, and the blockchain company. And I think I will lead if there's any questions uh, from uh, the sitters, uh, please go ahead, the mentors here. Yeah. yeah. Me? There's a question. Do you have any uh, mics? <coughs> Again. <laughs> As we said, it's all about collaboration. You're more than welcome. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions here in the back, the front, in the sides? No questions. No questions. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Okay, thank you. And thank you. Thank you for this fruitful session. Uh, and now I would like to invite you to the lunch hosted by the Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And thank you for taking part of this event. Looking forward to seeing you in our future events and thank you. <laughs>